China just banned the export of batteries globally. No, I'm just kidding. They didn't really. But they did just do something which is really interesting. And if you own or drive or invest in electric vehicles, this basically affects you, or if not right now, it will in the future. So China has just tightened up uh, the export controls on the stuff that literally powers our electric vehicles, and it's not lithium either. I'll tell you all about it. It's going to have knock-on effects across the whole industry, basically. So you'll, you'll know what it is in the next couple of minutes. I won't drag this out. Let's jump into it. Hello, folks. My name is Ben Alexander. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. Any questions as I go along, just pause it and you can put them in the comments. I read them. I will reply. This is one of those stories that seems kind of technical at first. You know, like, okay, China is fiddling with the export rules again, but it's actually a pretty big deal uh, because this time we're talking about battery grade graphite, rare earths and other essential materials that basically every, nearly every EV relies on. And when you realize just how many of those materials are processed or refined in China, it doesn't matter if it's dug up in the middle of Australia, it's refined in China and then it needs to go through the, the border controls basically from China to anywhere else in the world. You start to see the problem, don't you? Here is what we know, here's what's happened. A few months ago, China's Ministry of Commerce quietly rolled out new export restrictions and they're pretty, you know, they're pretty tough on key battery material ingredients, basically, such as synthetic and natural graphite, as well as some rare earth elements used in EV motors. So they're re restricting stuff that goes into the batteries and the motors. Now they've not banned them completely, but what they've done is introduced strict export license controls. Basically, if you want to ship something, uh, you know, you want to ship any of this stuff out of China, then you need to get government approval, you need to apply and get it, you know, rubber stamped. And then you need to disclose exactly where it's going and how it's going to be used. And the official reason is national security. So that's the phrase they're using, national security, quote. This is also about leverage, isn't it? And I won't go into details really, but the European Union has been cracking down on Chinese EV imports. The US slapped tariffs on batteries and minerals, and this is China's way of reminding the world, actually, we've got the ingredients to all of the things that you're trying to do. So this isn't just China flexing for fun. Over 90% of the world's battery grade graphite is actually refined in China. So 90% of the stuff that we put in our batteries and motors, you know, it's kind of made in China. And uh, even if raw materials come from Australia or Africa, like I said, it's still processed in China before it goes anywhere. And so they need to now in to apply if you're in China and you're exporting it. And uh, EV makers need this stuff. Desperately, they need this stuff. You've got graphite in nearly every lithium ion battery in the world. Tesla uses it, BYD uses it, Hyundai uses it, Volkswagen, Ford literally the lot of them. So when China makes a move like this, it kind of sends a sort of shockwave through the entire EV supply chain. Battery pack prices were finally starting to come down actually in the last year or two. And uh, now they're creeping back up. Benchmark synthetic graphite prices jumped nearly 20% just on the, the day or two of this policy change when the news came out. And here is the thing, even Chinese companies like BYD and CATL they will feel this too because they're actually still buying from third-party suppliers who now have to jump through hoops to export anything. So the, the impact is actually global and it's not just some internal Chinese policy, it's a global EV bottleneck. So here's where it gets interesting. For years now we've been hearing about the need to uh, onshore battery supply chains, especially in Europe. Uh, obviously Northvolt hasn't worked out very well as well. And uh, yeah, Europe's been talking about this a lot. The US as well. Australia is sitting on loads of raw materials, but hasn't really done much with it. Probably they'll sell it to Adani or something for a million dollars. And uh, yeah, suddenly there's a real sense of urgency in this last few months. So you've got companies like Talga in Sweden, Navonix in Queensland, and uh, CIRA, I think you say it's CIRA Resources, who've got a graphite project in Mozambique, but you know, do their refining in Louisiana in the US, all of them, they're all getting a lot more attention now. So even Tesla is actually trying to source graphite locally and build a refining or build some re re refining capability in the United States. Here is the reality though, you, know, you can't build a graphite refinery in six months. You can't just have lots of money and think you can just click your fingers and have that happen. Uh, they take years, these projects. 
it takes a very long time and then you've got to uh, get the people to work in them so it's a bit of a process yes this will accelerate alternatives so that's positive i suppose but in the short term prices are very likely to rise timelines are probably going to stretch a little bit so things will get more expensive more slow and uh, yeah especially in europe for us buyers especially in europe as well and australia we might start to see some delays and uh, price bumps for batteries and things like that i just want to jump in here for one second before i wrap the video up thank you so much to all the patrons on patreon even if you're on the free tier as well and all the youtube members uh, you make these videos possible i can't thank you enough i really appreciate it and uh, it's also just really touching you know you probably get this you probably understand it but when somebody likes what you do and they support you like like that and they just become a member even if it's on the free tier it's just it's really nice so thank you very much i appreciate that because i work really hard for these videos so this is a reminder that the ev revolution doesn't really depend on clever car designs or just the batteries alone it's also the ingredients of those things and uh you know there's a lot of political discourse that has to happen to get these things all traded around the world and then they can make batteries it's pretty tough going and uh, it, yeah it depends on raw materials those materials are still mostly controlled by one country even if they don't come from that country graphite rare earths cobalt lithium and uh, yeah if there's a pinch point it's probably in china at this point it's a, a yeah it's a bit of a warning shot i think i don't think that's been too dramatic to say that it's a bit of a warning shot they didn't need to do that at all but they did it anyway it's not just a trade policy it's a geopolitical lever i think it's uh, a very big geopolitical lever and it might just be the thing that forces other countries to finally build their own supply chains and even if it's more expensive they should do it anyway probably like the european Un union seven and a half hundred million people and the rules are now changing and everybody's supposed to buy an electric car but you know we're purchasing all the batteries from uh, other places basically so let me know what you think should countries like australia germany and the us be racing to build their own graphite and rare earth uh, infrastructure should i start a kickstarter and uh, you know crowdfund this and we'll do one in the next couple of months and uh, no i'm just kidding or is it already too late what do you think i'm sure there's a lot of things to say about this you're very welcome to go at it in the comments and say anything you like drop your thoughts in the comments especially if you uh, working mining especially if you work for a battery company or for the chinese government uh yeah all logistics i suppose as well i'd love to hear from you thank you